Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're going to build this interactive IKEA website that you're seeing right now on your screen. And in this, basically you have an image of a room where you have different products laid down and you have pulsating dots on each of these products. When you click on these dots, you get to know more about the product. And not just that, you can also get to see more images of the product in the same image. So you get even more information. So all of these dots are clickable and they animate on their own and basically are also customizable. So we're gonna see how can we design this really simple yet beautiful interaction using just Figma. So let's get started. So before we get started, let me quickly explain you what are the assets that you will be needing for this interaction. So first of all, you will need a desktop artboard and in the desktop artboard, I have placed a screenshot of the IKEA website. So I just went to the IKEA website and just copied one of their images uh, just find the images that you like and just copy paste it here we're not going to animate any of these elements so it's perfectly fine if it's a screenshot as well okay uh, the next thing that we need is a bunch of images of one product so for example this bedsheet product i got these images from the ikea website again just go to the ikea website find the product copy paste these images and get it here so these are just simple images not grouped at all just merely simple images uh, then you have two text that is again what I have copied from the IKEA website and a simple button with add to cart and a heart icon. All of these are available here. Just go and copy paste it here. So these are the basic uh, elements that we need for our interaction. So the first thing that we need to build is the pulsating dot itself. So let's see how can we build that. So first we'll need to draw a circle. So let me draw a circle and I'll just do it like a 24 size. Okay. And... I'll select this one and I'll call it dot one. Okay. And let me just quickly add a color to it. So we'll have this yellow fill to it. Now let me just quickly duplicate it. Command D. And I will call this one as BG. Okay. The background. And we want it to be a little slightly bigger size. So let me just do 80. Okay. And I'll just quickly give some opacity to it because we don't want it to be this bright as the smaller circle. The smaller circle will be the center one and it will always be the same but the outer one will be pulsating. So this will give like a 20% opacity. Okay. And we can also give it a stroke. So I'll just give it a yellow stroke. Okay. And now we have these two circles. So the first one is the one that will stay same. And the other one is the outer one, the bigger one, BG, will be the one that will pulsate. Okay. So now we'll just select these two and we'll hit Option Command G to group them in a frame. Perfect. So our frame one is ready. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three variations of this. Like just copy it three times. One, two, and three. Okay. So now we have to design the three stages of pulses, of the pulsating dot. So what we can do is I'll just come here. Okay. And in the first one, the outer ring will be smaller. So I'll just maybe give it like 20 or maybe 10. Okay. And center align it so that you won't see it. Right. So in this one, the circle is really small. In this one, the circle will expand. And in this one, the circle will disappear. Okay. The outer ring. So it'll give us the effect of pulsation and we'll just link them through prototyping. So this will be the first stage. This will be the second stage. And in the third stage, we want the outer ring to disappear. So we'll give a zero pass through. Okay. Now these are the three states that we have already created. Now what we need to do is we'll select all these three frames that we have created. We'll go here and we'll select the third option, create component set. So we'll create one component and convert these three frames into three individual component in one bigger component. So these will become the variants basically. So if you have any confusion around variant, I have a video around variant on my channel. So you can go and check it out. Okay. So now we have this uh, component one, we can rename it as pulse and it has three variations, first, second, and third. Now let's quickly prototype between these three. So I'll go to my prototyping tab and I'll select the first one and this linking is called as interactive variant. So this needs to be enabled in your system. So I'll select the first frame and I'll drag it to the next frame. 
and we don't want it to be on click we want it to be happening automatically so we'll select after delay okay and we'll give some timeline of 100 millisecond because that seems fine frame 1 to frame 2 perfect we don't want dissolve we want smart animate ease out and 300 millisecond seems a little bit slow i mean faster so we can do 500 milliseconds probably okay and we'll select the second one do the exact same process here after delay 100 millisecond change to frame to frame 3 smart animate ease out 500 milliseconds okay perfect now i'll select the frame 3 and i'll link it back to the frame first okay and again after delay and here we want that from this stage to this state i should immediately come because my circle is disappear and now it has to grow and uh, it has to shrink actually right in the first frame so what i'll do is i'll just select one millisecond because i immediately want to come from here to here or maybe i can just do 100 milliseconds probably and we don't want smart animate because we don't want two transitioning to be happening because here the circle is disappeared and it's also shrinking so we don't want to see that transition so we'll remove smart animate we'll do instant okay now this is done and now let's see how this looks like so what i'll do is i'll come to my assets tab okay and you'll see you'll have local component enabled and you'll have this pulse here okay so let me just quickly drag and drop this pulse from the assets panel onto my screen and now let's see how this looks like so i'll just hit the play icon so we are in figma uh, in the prototyping mode and if you can see this circle is pulsating perfectly right so we have created three stages of pulses and now we have linked them together and now we have also created component out of it so it's available to put anywhere on the screen so that's why you can put it as many as you want in as many places as you want and it'll not matter because all of these are created by components so if you see all of them are now pulsating right so our first stage is done we have created the pulsating dot now what we need to do is when we click on these dots we need to see this card so let's build that bit so for the second part we need to build the details card and to do that we have the bunch of images ready uh, which we have grabbed it from the ikea website as i told you earlier some details some buttons okay so first thing what i need to do is i'll just select all of these images that we have okay select all and i'll all, now i'll group them together in a frame so i'll do option command g on my keyboard and they are now in a frame i'll just call them images okay now what i need to do is i'll come here and i'll select clip content okay now what clip content does is anything that is overflowing of the bounds of the frame will not be visible and i have explained this in various uh, videos in my past videos so you can just check it out as well if you have any confusion between frames and groups okay so now what we need to do is i'll just hit command on my keyboard and i'll resize the bounds of the frame and i want it to be same as the bounds of the first image okay so now what is happening is all the images are there still there if you see but since clip content is enabled it's not visible and now they are overflowing the rest of the images are overflowing this particular frame so when something overflows we have special property that is enabled in the prototyping which is scrolling so i'll come here select my prototyping select the images frame and overflow behavior i'll just do horizontal scrolling so now what will happen is we'll be able to scroll these images horizontally in this particular window now again if you are not sure about how scrolling works how this entire overflowing concept works I again have a Figma short video where I've explained this in details. So go check it out on my channel. Okay. So now we have uh, enabled the scrolling of this entire images. What we need to do is I'll select this images. I'll select the text, the price, the button. And again, I'll click option command G on my keyboard to club them in a frame. Okay. And I'll call it uh, probably bed. Okay. So I'm calling it bed and now in this frame, I'll just give it some fill. So white fill is there. Now, if you see, there's just sticking on the edges so we can give it a some spacing. We can give it some margin actually. So what I'll do is I'll hit command on my keyboard and resize the bounds of this group as well. I'll do this. I'll do this. 
and I'll do it like this. Okay. And now what I want to do is I also want to give it. So just make sure that it's just perfectly fine. Yeah. I'll give it some rounded corners. So 24 maybe. And I'll come inside. I'll select the images frame and I'll give it some rounded corner as well. 12 maybe. Okay. So now this looks perfect. Now what I want to do is I'll come here. My first card is ready. The bed card is ready and I have to make it for other ones as well. Um, so I have to make it for table. I have to make it for this cupboard, right? I have to make it for this rug. I have to make similar cards like this. So let me just quickly build that bit and come back to you and then we'll do the next bit of it. So now we have created these details card for four elements. So we have one for bed sheet that we already created in the similar way I've created for drawer, for rug and for table. Now what we need to do is I'll select all four of these uh, detail cards, go on top and create multiple components. So I need to create components from this. So I'll just hit create multiple components and Figma will create individual component out of these. Perfect. So now we have four components enabled. Now for the third part, what we need to do is we need to lay out some of these pulsating dots on the image somewhere on the different products that we have and link that uh, dot to the particular detail card that we have already built. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my asset tab. Okay. I'll select the pulses dot and I'll see all my other cards are also available here now. And what I'll do is I'll just select my pulses and I'll place one on this table. I'll place one on this rug and I will place one on this cupboard maybe. Yeah. Just place it here in the center. Cool. So this looks good. Uh, this looks perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to link these dots on click of these dots to one of these cards. So what I'll first going to do is I'm just going to come here. I'll select the dot here, bedsheet dot, go to my prototyping tab. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll just link this to this particular uh, card. Okay. Now, we don't want uh, so we have on click that is perfectly fine we want it to be on click but we don't want navigate to we want to open overlay so this is really important because open overlay gives us some really interesting properties so we get open overlay do manual option okay uh, close when clicking outside so when you click anywhere outside the uh, overlay will collapse don't add any background the animation should not be instant it should be dissolved so that it appears really nicely you can do 300 millisecond that will be perfectly fine and since manual is enabled you can now place it any way you want so i'm going to just place it over the top drop so we have the dot and we'll just place it on top of it okay so that's the first thing now we want to do it similarly for the other as well so i'll just select the second dot and i'll link the second dot to the rug option okay so on click not navigate to open overlay manual close while clicking, frame and missing, everything like the same. Just place it where you feel comfortable, right? Where you look good. This one is done. Let's do similarly for the table. Perfect. So what we have done is we have linked all the pulsating dots to one of these four detailed cards, right? Now let's quickly see how this looks like in our prototyping window. So I'll just hit this and let's see. So we have all our uh, pulsating dots. If I click on this, I'm getting the details of this particular rug. Perfect. I can swipe outside I mean, I can click outside and it will disappear. If I click on this, I'm getting the details of the bed sheet. And if you see, I can quickly scroll between them as well because we have enabled the scrolling property for this particular images, right? So that's perfectly fine. Similarly for the third one, I'm able to see the card here and the reason we have chosen overlay because we can place it anywhere. So if you see we have placed for this dot we have placed it on the left. So that's the flexibility that we get with the overlay and you can also click outside and it'll disappear. So that's the intended behavior that we want, right? So yeah, this looks really nice. Let me know in the comments um, if you like this video or not, if you like this particular interaction or not. I really enjoyed building it because it's really simple. And we have used a lot of interaction and we have blended a lot of interaction to build this particular interaction. Really sweet, really simple that we have done in Figma. So let me know your thoughts. 
and i think that's it for today's video if you do try it out uh, tag me on my socials and i'll also check out your uh, prototyping also the file for this figma interaction will be available in the description so if you have any issues just check out the figma source file and yeah i think that's it for today's video i'll see you in my next video take care bye bye